When a brownout occurs, demand exceeds supply, say when all the air conditioners are being used during the summer, over and above what is ordinary energy use. And there's simply not enough energy to go around. The energy supply is finite, but the demand is increased. And so what happens under those conditions is lights don't uh, burn as brightly, machines may operate below efficiency or capacity, and some machines that are particularly sensitive to drops in energy may fail outright. The mitochondria are the um, electrical grids within each cell. They provide the power for all biologic functions to occur within the cell. And if there's a problem in that grid generating power, then the cells will experience a burnout. They won't function as well. If it's significant enough, the cells can die. If enough cells experience burnout or die, then the organs in which they are found may become dysfunctional and show symptoms. Some organs, like the brain, are very sensitive to drops in energy. So it doesn't take much for the brain to show symptoms like developmental delays or dementia, stroke, migraine, seizures, and then hearing loss and vision loss because those are areas of our highly specialized areas of the brain. Some organs, like the pancreas or skin, can tolerate drops in energy, but if the energy supply drops below a certain threshold, even those organs will start to show symptoms as well. Now, all organs are at risk for having, um, um, are at risk for showing symptoms in a mitochondrial disorder because all organs are energy dependent uh, more or less. And so what you can find in patients who have the disease are some will have one organ, others multiple organs in any, almost any combination. It depends on all kinds of things, all kinds of factors, what other physiology is going on, that particular mitochondrial disease, how it's inherited in that particular family. Now, mitochondrial disease is actually not one disease but a group of disorders. Um, if you think of the power grid, then if you have a problem in the transmission lines, if you have a problem in the transformers, you can have a problem at any part along that process. And the net result is the same. There's a problem in power production. The same thing occurs in the mitochondria. You can have any number of problems within the mitochondria, all causing a disorder of energy metabolism. Now, as Christy was talking about, it's not... Um, we estimate the incidence to be perhaps 1 in 4,000. But if you look in the medical literature, some will say 1 in 7,000, others more frequent than 1 in 4,000. Those of us who work in this, uh, in this area and who see patients who are diagnosed or misdiagnosed with other disorders like multiple sclerosis or muscular dystrophy before their true diagnosis of mitochondrial diseases is made, those of us who see this um, really believe that the incidence of mitochondrial disease is higher, perhaps in the order of one in a thousand, if not, if not more. Now to put things in perspective, cystic fibrosis, with which you're all familiar, has an incidence of about one in 2,000, one in 2,500. Muscular dystrophy of Jerry Lewis fame it has an incidence of about one in 6,000. So mitochondrial disease is right up there in terms of the same incidence and effect in the population. Mitochondrial disease is generally inherited, like CF or muscular dystrophy. But unlike those disorders, the different individual mitochondrial disorders can be inherited in, all, in a number of different uh, inheritance patterns. It depends on the specific uh, disease. So today, you're going to hear, as Christy mentioned, from people who live with cell energy burnout all the time sometimes having better days when there's more energy available or there's less demand, other days when there um, simply is less energy available. We'll hear some about diagnosis and treatment. But the truth is, there is no good treatment for mitochondrial disease. Sure, you can optimize nutrition, you can have people sleep better, and that means that they'll be able to utilize the energy that they're capable of making. Um, if one understands the physiology of mitochondria, and the pathology of what happens in mitochondrial disease, you can develop a more thoughtful approach to treatment. But ultimately, 
there's no way of curing the underlying disease. The best that we can do at this point is try to attack the symptoms and improve overall quality of life. So as we work towards more effective treatments, we have to realize that many, perhaps most patients with mitochondrial disorders are going undiagnosed right now, especially in the adult medical community. And those that do get diagnosed um, aren't getting the medical attention they really need. It's with um, energizing groups of the, within the community and within the legislature like this that we can develop an approach where we can work together um, to really improve the future of this unique medical community.